Have you ever looked up at the stars in the sky and wondered about the universe? What exactly is out there? How did all the wonders of the universe come into existence? I'm sure we've all pondered over these questions from time to time. You might now be wondering what the universe has to do with the talk on molecular genetics. If you think about it, we all have many universes made up of biomolecules within us. So just as astronomy focuses on answering the questions about the stars and the planets and the larger universe out there, molecular genetics focuses on solving the mysteries of life within our own many universes at the level of our genetic molecules. At the center of our many universes is a key biomolecule called DNA and it contains the genetic code or the blueprint of life. This is where molecular genetics begins. I am Avantika Patil, a molecular geneticist turned startup entrepreneur and over the next few minutes I am going to give you a small glimpse into the vast and wondrous world of molecular genetics. Not only is it vast but it is also incredibly complicated and every topic within the field can be a branch of science in its own right. So by the end of this video, I'm hoping that you can take a brief idea about the basic principles of molecular genetics. So without further ado, let's get started. We live in a world full of data. Whether it is a space scientist analyzing data from a satellite or one of us watching Netflix on our phones, data is everywhere and in today's world data is power. Even this video is a form of data. And at the core of all data is always a code. That's how engineers program all of our devices and we can use them. But have you ever thought about the code and data within our own bodies? Each cell in every living organism contains a genetic code full of biological data that programs life itself. Now DNA contains this precious code of life as countless combinations of just four components or bases a, T, G, and C. And the entire DNA or genome of a single person is a staggering 6.4 billion components of that code. That's much, much more than any book or novel out there. Yet, this massive amount of code is neatly packed as our chromosomes in our tiny cells in an even tinier nucleus. And bear in mind that the average human body has 30 to 40 trillion cells. That's the power of nature, the greatest engineer of all. So what is DNA and how does it fit into our cells? I'm going to use my mouse pointer for this part. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Its structure was first discovered in the 1950s by a brilliant female chemist named Rosalind Franklin. This discovery is perhaps one of the most important in medical history. The DNA structure, as you can see here, is a double helix containing two strands. These strands are made up of units called nucleotides. A nucleotide contains one of four chemical bases, the ones I mentioned before, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. A, T, G, C, attached to a sugar and phosphate molecule. The sugar molecule in DNA is deoxyribose as the name suggests. Each base within a nucleotide pairs up with another base making up base pairs and that's basically the genetic code that I keep talking about. A always pairs with T and G always pairs with C. That's the rule and that's how the two strands are formed. Essentially, it's like a ladder where the bases make up the center and the sugar phosphate molecules make up the outer part called the sugar phosphate backbone. And fragments of DNA make up genes. To fit all of this into our cells, the DNA molecule is tightly packed around proteins called histones, like beads on a string. This is further condensed into chromosomes and finally fits into the nuclei of all of our cells. This entire process is studied in a field called epigenetics and the number of chromosomes differs from species to species. In humans, as you may know, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes making a total of 46 chromosomes. These are the pairs. And the imaging technique we use to visualize our chromosomes is called karyotype. And in some organisms like bacteria, DNA is actually circular. So what does 
DNA do? DNA performs the important function of coding for proteins, as you will see now. DNA first makes copies of itself through replication with the help of an enzyme called DNA polymerase. Its code is then transcribed into RNA with another enzyme called RNA polymerase. This happens in the cell nucleus. The RNA then travels into the cytoplasm where it is translated into functional proteins with the help of ribosomes. Proteins then carry out all the essential functions of life. And just as we edit and re-edit our assignments before submissions, RNA and proteins are edited and processed by various regulatory pathways before becoming functional. As you can see these here. This entire process is called the central dogma of life. This is how genes are expressed into functional proteins. It's very complex and involves a variety of pathways. And any errors or disruption in this process leads to genetic disorders. And studying this is actually the key to finding out how we can solve these disorders and make ourselves better. So is DNA really the all time heavyweight champion of genetics? Certainly not. There is another hero in this story that is RNA and this was proven by retroviruses like HIV that actually use RNA as their primary genetic code instead of DNA. So RNA is ribonucleic acid. It contains nucleotides like DNA but it is single stranded. The difference is in the sugar molecule which is ribose and also the base thymine is replaced by uracil. So the code is AUGC instead of ATGC. Even the novel SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is currently driving us crazy, is a single-stranded RNA virus. And furthermore, not all DNA is double-stranded and not all RNA is single-stranded. There are always exceptions to the rule. There can be um, triple-stranded DNA or double-stranded RNA. So now that we know the basics, what are the applications of molecular genetics? Since it is the basis of life, its applications are very vast, right from conservation to evolution studies to forensics where we use DNA printing to um, agriculture to vaccines. Uh, the current SARS-CoV-2 vaccine, some of them are DNA vaccines and the Moderna one is actually an RNA vaccine. So uh, molecular genetics has applications throughout and an interesting development is the CRISPR technique. This is a gene editing tool where we can edit and we can add new stuff into DNA just like we use our word processor. So we can edit, we can copy, we can paste, we can do absolutely anything. It's that powerful and it's fast and it's accurate and it's cheap. So we can essentially make synthetic life in the lab these days with the kind of technology we have. The world of molecular genetics is indeed vast and wondrous. The possibilities and applications are endless and as our technology and knowledge improves, we will keep achieving more and more. We are at a stage where we can create synthetic life in the lab and maybe even send it to Mars one day. But this is a double-edged sword. There is one side which protects us and can you know, help us in improving mankind. But there is also the other side which raises a lot of ethical questions because all this research affects all of us and everything out there. A recent study injected a human brain gene into marmoset monkeys, this cute little guy. And this was done in the fetuses and that resulted in an enlarged brain. So this helped scientists in understanding how human beings developed such large brains which makes us much more intelligent than other species out there. But is this really necessary? Do we really need monkeys with larger brains? Scientists realized that but, and they did not let the monkeys take birth. They aborted those fetuses before taking birth. But was that necessary in the first place? And is this really the beginning of the rise of the planet of the apes? I leave you to think about this. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and it gave you a useful insight into the world of molecular genetics. I also hope that it stirred your curiosity to dive deeper into the field and to know more. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay curious.